Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another exciting episode of Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu. I'm your co-host, TMD. We want to thank our main sponsor. That's going to be Knox Pro. That's right. All you got to do is log on to the website, www.knoxpro.com, and you want to find out anything in all things Knox Pro. That's where you're going to find it. Big Kish, how are you feeling tonight? Hey, we are here. We back at it again, my man. It's good to see you. It's, I was, man, it's always good to see you. And I every love. time I walk in here, you are working on a banger. Uh, man, I, I don't know if I can even say what um, you were recording uh, while I was coming in. Yeah, you can say it. It was a tribute to my uncle Seeker. Man, you, you don't know? you don't sleep. You don't you don't you don't do. You just nonstop grinding and working and producing. And, and yeah. man, I can't wait for people to hear that song because that. Was dope. That's what keeps my heart pumping, man. You know, if I'm not doing anything productive, you know, during the day, you know, we can't get back time, Joey. Yes, sir. So at the same time, you got to keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. So, yes, sir. but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be back. You know, uh, uh, today we're doing a podcast. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in to the Rikishi Fatu uh, Off the Top podcast. You know, we are up on Spotify, Apple, and the whole nine. You know, I want to thank y'all. You know, uh, the last episode that... Uh, where I let my feelings out about my thoughts, thoughts about my uncle and so forth. Uh, it was probably one of the highest uh, of uh, uh, views in my uh, podcast. So I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Joey, yes, sir. Uh, for taking the time and just, uh, you know, let me speak my mind and so forth as far as the, you know, the legend of the uncle of, of the Anwai strong family, you know, my uncle, my father, my mentor, you know, of this industry. So, uh, yeah, you know, you guys are probably hearing this Friday. Uh, it's Friday during the daytime or nighttime mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, we're actually, I'm actually in Pensacola, Florida uh, by now, you know, to lay my uncle to rest and so forth and to be able to see the family and, uh, you know, come together in prayer and celebration of the the life and the of the legacy of the legend, you know, the High Chief Polite Val de Ati Sika on Hawaii. And so, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's, I'm, I'm happy to see everybody. You know what I mean? I, I feel like, you know, you know, with something uh, uh, big and devastating like this of a passing in our family, you know, it, we, we need a lot of hugs, loves and laughters together. And, and I'm sure, you know, I just found out, you know, my brother TK is going to make it out there and right. some of the other high chiefs and the families that are coming from the islands. You know, it's going to be a great celebration. You know, we're going to miss Uncle, uh, but knowing how Uncle Sika is, hey, man, it's he, nothing but a party. Wow. You know, and, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate his life and, and have a great time. And I want to thank all the fans uh, that reached out, you know, the mm -hmm. condolences and so mm -hmm. forth, you know, through all our, our social media. Uh, you know, thank you for taking the time out to... Uh, out of your day, you know, to uh, recognize and uh, show love and respect to, you know, to Uncle Sika. So, um, hey, uh, you know, uh, till we meet again, you know, I can't wait to, uh, to that happen. But for the meantime, I still got a lot of work to do on this earth. Yes, sir. In the Come meantime, on. you got to grind. That's it. In the and meantime, the bloodline is the timeline. <laughs> You know, let's get it on. And I like that new hat you're rocking. Yeah, well, so, you know, we got these customized uh, Rikishi off the top, you know, hats. A uh, big shout out to uh, our crew out there in Blackout Fight Gears. Uh-huh, available you know, at RikishiFatu.com. Yes, they're coming soon. I, You know, I just wanted to sample a few. Mm -hmm. And so if y'all watching, you can see it, you know, and there it is. It's Still got that. the tag on there. I like the fitted ones, you know what I mean? Yes, I got a big head, size eight. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I got the ones that one size fits all for everybody's snapbacks. So, yeah, it's got good quality. And that's, that's the only place that, you know, I really get my stuff done, you know, besides them and also, uh, you know, Phoenix Designs out there in uh, Indiana where I get all my merchandise done. So, yeah, big shout out. Check them out. Yeah, and you were on the road. You just came back in. You did oh. another uh, Funko signing, and I, I tuned in. I didn't want to bother you. Yeah. I was going to be like, what a big key. I didn't want to bother you because you were doing like one of these numbers, straight rock star sh were like sign, and they're passing. Boom, 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 yeah. boom, like hotcakes, man. Well, you know, the, you know, when you're doing those private signings, they have they only have so many hours. Yes, sir. You know, as far as negotiations and the deal. So, you know, for me, it's like you know, I wanna I wanna try to knock out as much as I can for them within that you know period of time. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I love doing things like that. I'm all for the, 
you know, for the you know the small business people mm-hmm. that are trying to you know you know trying to make a coin and so forth. And I enjoy you know giving back. I enjoy helping those. And you know, my Funko Pop has been amazing, absolutely amazing. I mean, the comic cons that I go to. You know, I'm coming back to these Comic Cons by request. Mm-hmm. And I realized it's like, why am I going back to this one? I just left this. But it was because these Funko Pops, these, uh, right. you know, the Rikishi fans and so forth are, you know, wanting to get these Funko Pops uh, uh, signed. And, you know, I, you know, we're talking about this thing because everything revolves into wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, Joey, I always like to utilize our platform to each one teach one. Yes, sir. And I was just talking, you know, uh, to my wife and, like, you know, it came to me that, and I never really paid attention to this because I'm just so busy hustling, hustling grinding. And I tell you, you know, I can't, it, it's a f- weird feeling that fans pay for my autograph. Going back and training and so forth, you know, as a young kid and just starting into, you know, the dirty rings and the hot atmosphere, you never even think about that, you know? And moving forward 30 years, you know, uh, forward, it's like, here's my autograph. It's it's worth something. And, you know, I want to say this to those, like, I am so blessed I am so grateful and so thankful for the acknowledgement of the fans, you know, as just, you know, those that have followed me and those that have watched me grow in this crazy industry of professional wrestling. You know, I can give back and, and say this, like, you know, always bet on yourself. Don't ever leave yourself out of the conversation. Try not to uh, stay around toxic, you know, people, toxic, uh, environment. You know, there's a goal that you see that only you can, you know, bring to reality. Stay with it. Cause you might have family members, you know, and I speak, you know, truth on this mm-hmm. close friends who you thought was your close friends. Like the meantime, they smiling with you and they hearing all your plans but deep inside, they don't want you to win. And so I think about all this stuff here, like what it took to get to where my autograph is worth something. Be it $5, be it 10 I, I used to be there, $5. I used to be at $10, 20 And it goes up to when somebody's paying for my autograph at $200, Man, God, glory to God, man. I, all blessings. Because, you know, this this is just something that just... Who would bitch about having a job like that? To sign autographs and get paid for that. You know, only somebody that's a... I would like to call in this industry somebody that's a prima donna. Mm-hmm. That don't get it. Like, these people, man, are the reason why you're here. Right. Show love, show respect. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I can read in different arenas, uh, different Comic-Cons. New York has a lot more money than Arkansas. Mm -hmm. You know, we go down further south to New Orleans. It ain't like California. So I kind of always gauge my prices when I'm working with these different promoters. Right. You know, I don't Mm -hmm. charge any kids with special, special handicap kids. Any kids with autism, I don't charge them. Everything is free when they come through. You know, I think it's, it's just being it's free to be kind to. Yep. They already have a life uh, that they're dealing with, you know. And so at the end of the day, if, you know, some of you wrestlers or just entertainers in, in general, hey, man, it's free to be kind, man. I mean, you know, you don't have to be an all the time towards the fans. Because remember, without the fans, your ass wouldn't be, you know, where you at. If you're in the sports entertainment, if you're in the wrestling, independent world, wrestling, uh, uh, independent shows or whatever. It just, you know, what my gain was at these small independent shows was building my brand. You know, you never know, like, you know, it's hard getting booked on a show from a promoter because we know promoters, boy, they sometimes, some of them, most of them like snakes. Yeah. They don't want to pay you, Joey. 
They was like, why should I pay you? What are you drawing for me? Right. Nobody knows who you are. So they think they're doing you a favor. So what you do, I said, okay, this is where you go to your merchandise. But this is how you get your merchandise sold. You got to go in the ring and you perform. Once you perform, you win the crowd, you win your fan base, now you go to the table, and here's your fan base, right? So you keep winning the fan base. A smart promoter will see that. Once they see that, they're going to say, oh, Joey's getting a fan base here. We need to bring him back. Well, by the time they come to you and ask, hey, is this date open for you? We'd like to bring you back. Boom, this is where you hit them with your feet. Yes, sir. Think long, here it comes to you. <laughs> Always kicking that knowledge. 100%. Um, you know, I had a question about going back to the to the Funko Pops. If you, could, if you, which I'm sure in the future it's going to happen. Yep. If you could have another one released right now, which Funko Pop, which character w w would it be? Um, man, I would really like to see uh, a too cool Funko Pop. Three pack. Three pack. Yes, sir. You know, that was just, uh, you know, it, it just fits the Funko Pop vibe. You know what I mean? Too cool was, a, you know, was the three threesome that, you know, good, diverse hip hop type of vibe. And, you know, it, it was just a fun, uh, fun character for all three of us to, to be put together. I think it was uh, one of those uh, those factions that, you know, we were the ones that come in to make people happy, make them smile. And so for yeah, so I would answer your question, Funko. Uh, too cool, I think. Speaking of too cool, episode yeah. thirty is coming up pretty soon, and I think it'd be really fitting for episode thirty, the number three. Uh, I think we talk about too cool. Yeah, that's... episode thirty, but folks, fans, tune in. It's going to be one a hell of an episode. Uh, there's plenty of stuff that we're going to talk about in that episode. Y'all better have enough time. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, man, speaking of time yeah. and reality, ladies and gentlemen, the reality is now. The, the wait is over. If you've been living under a rock, um, you probably uh, already know that Jacob Fatu, the Samoan werewolf, has finally debuted at WWE. Now, uh, he had one hell of a debut, taking out three of the top baby faces in, in uh, one, one minute. Mm. Um, I got Did you did you see the debut? No, I, I again, I was out there in On Buffalo. The I just. By the time I got back, I went to bed. So I, I guess I better go. Well, you can fill me in. Yes, sir. Well, you know, he takes out the three baby faces, comes off the top on Cody Rhodes, bam, takes out Cody Rhodes, stands yep. tall with the bloodline. The two Tongan brothers, uh, oddly enough, they looked a little apprehensive when uh, uh, Jacob and Solo threw up the ones. They threw, yep. like, really putting Jacob over, like, wow, this is crazy. So I was just wondering, um, man, that 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 just, uh, you know, that's a seed planted right there, at least uh, to myself, uh, watching um uh that was smackdown and then the, the prior week they had the bloodline acknowledgement ceremony where um solo your son solo sokoa um wanted to be acknowledged as the new tribal chief and of course the world saw so uh they have the ceremony and paul Heyman would not Acknowledge mm, yeah. Solo as the new tribal chief so then the new bloodline 2.0 they take out paul Heyman. they Double power bomb through through the table. Uh, first of all, what are your thoughts on 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 fifty eight year old Paul Heyman taking a power bomb through the table? A lot of people are praising him for that commitment. Word is he didn't even sleep uh, the night before the segment. Just give him that really tired and stressed out look. People are saying well, uh, he's he's really uh, well, stepped up to this role. Uh, what do you what say you? Well, I I mean at fifty eight years old, you know Paul's not a wrestler. <laughs> You know what I mean? He's, I mean, he's taking bumps, but not correct, correct bumps where it's able to protect him and so forth. You know, um, I, I, I seen that part, of course, on my Instagram, the, you know, the WWE stories that they sent. Uh, yeah, I, I, you know, big up to Paul, uh, for taking that bump. Uh, you know, I, he's, he, he looked like he landed sideways, which, he sh uh, I feel he should have flattened out a little bit more. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you know, to a guy that that's not what he does, let's take a bump and stuff like that. It just goes to show you, you know, how much Paul is invested into this bloodline story, you know, and, uh, you know, so big ups to Paul. And uh, for Jacob, you know, for him, the, you know, I, I think we talked about this, called it before it even happened. 
you know, the way Jacob has uh, needs to come in. And for him to come through and, you know, lay out three, you know, top baby faces, you know, it was, it was uh, a good uh, a good investment, uh, a good way to bring him in. And obviously, if we've seen him lay those three out, which is Cody, Randy Orton, and uh, Kevin, Kevin Owens. Owens. And so you can go either way now, you know. And like I said before, to get the best out of Jacob Fatu, the utmost talent that I know this kid has, you got to put him with a great worker. You got to put him with somebody that's, you know, that's solid. Like, and I, I think I mentioned that before, Randy Orton. Yes, sir. You yes, know, so did. Jacob can dance with Randy Orton. He can dance with Cody Rhodes. And, you know, he obviously can dance with Kevin Owens. Mm -hmm. You know, but he, Jacob is a top-notch main event worker. If you book him the right way and, uh, uh, you know, run the stories the right way to where Jacob is not lost into the bloodline, uh, I, I think, you know, everybody's going to be happy. The company's going to see a lot of more asses and seats from the bloodline. I was able to watch his debut in the Bay Area at my parents' house, so me and my dad got to watch it. And Man, um, how was that, boy? Just big, to know Jacob was sitting there on the couch. I'm very, I'm You know so, what I mean? Probably eating, uh, you know, some chicken and rice and, <laughs> Joey, get the mayonnaise. It was very, I'm very proud of him. I'm, yeah. I'm very, I'm proud is probably an understatement. I'm sure you understand that. Um, but there was this moment when he was climbing up the, the turnbuckle yeah. to do the splash to the outside. Yeah. And he took this pause. That is you. That is uh, the Knox Pro teachings right there because where's your money? Your In your face. face. So he, unlike most performers, you know, like he took that time and boom, he had that money shot. And I thought to myself, he just sold a million T-shirts with that that pose sure. right there. It made all the highlights. So he's <laughs> doing all the facials. Um, and then I find out he, he's got the number one freaking selling merchandise. T-shirt, yes. So he had the T-shirt. I spotted that, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just, man, I, I'm so proud of him. Yeah. Um, it, and it is really cool to see him finally make it because I know what he went through. Yeah. I know what he and did. And you know how much money he owes you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Because I damn sure, there's a little bit. Sure no, I'm, I'm keeping tab, Jacob. There, there, there's a balance. There's oh, a balance. Yeah. So if you're listening, <laughs> Wolf, we know you got that big time payoff. You no, know, man. don't forget no. about the little people out here. Oh man, you know, you know. But I, I know yeah. what he did, and yeah. I know what he didn't do to get to where he's at, and that's yes, why so. I'm so proud of him. You know, uh, he got that second chance at, at life. Yeah. And man, he he really really nailed it. It's he, always been in front of him, Joey. Yes, sir. It's always been in front of him longer than what's Jacob been an in independent seven years? Uh, a little longer than that. It's been long, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And everybody so knew. It, it's always, always been in front of him. It was just the point when are you done playing around? Yes, when sir. are you get ready to let's go to work? Yes, sir. You know? And so all that, you know, you can only make like excuses so long. I, I want to hear excuses. I want to hear solutions. Because mm -hmm. if I tell you my excuse or whatever, oh, we we going to go back and forth. And, and <laughs> shit will never get done. Right. You know what I mean? So I was telling me, oh, and I, I talked to him. I said, hey, when I talk to Jake, I don't talk to him about wrestling. Or he'll ask me. Mm -hmm. But I'll just talk to him like uh, kind of a father mentor figure. Yeah, well, stay the course. Your life is changing right now. You're going to see a whole bunch of things change. All right, you're going to hear from people that you ain't never damn hear from. You're going to have a whole bunch of people asking you for money, a whole bunch of people asking you for tickets. But remember your real ones, Jacob. That's it. And 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 I don't think your real ones, they're not, they don't want nothing, man. They, they're just so proud to see you finally get where they always knew you need to be. Yep. So the ones that are just going to call you out the blues, them is the ones you need to check. Yeah. Or don't even, don't even, you don't even waste your time replying to him, right? Because at the end of the day, where was y'all when Jacob was, you know, barely, you know, afford a Subway sandwich, you know? Where was y'all when Jacob needs some, you know, food and diapers for his kids and, and so that. And, you know, no need to, you know, to throw, you know, names or whatever out there about, but at the end of the day, you know, you know, like, you know, in general, mm -hmm. like people that were there for you, where you, you know, from the, from the beginning. So, you know, keep it at that. 
Spe- speaking of names, how awesome was it that he got to go in as Jacob Fatu? The Samoan Werewolf. The Samoan Werewolf is a nickname given to him uh, from here. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. Like I said, bloodline is the sideline, I guess. And, and um, sideline. They were going to call him Caesar uh, Sokoa. Oh, that would have been a Right. I'm so- How do you even call Solo Sokoa and Caesar Sokoa? Man. Which one is it? Is it that Sokoa brand now or Sokoa dynasty? Just thank, thank uh, God above that listen, he was able to come out with just, his name. Just keep it simple. And I think. Guys, just keep it simple. I think you know so. What I mean? And they went that route. So now it's it's Jacob Fatu and of all, I mean, the Samoan werewolf. That's it. Worldwide. It's world famous you, now. You already know, like back in the day when we see Jacob. Yeah, Jacob, pour that damn water all over. You come out on the stage of Little Knox Pro back in the day, 250 sold-out crowd. Mm. My blind ass come out, goes a step on the <laughs> damn Maple Leaf stage, almost take a bump, and I'm yelling at Jacob for pouring. I said, how'd you f- pour the water in the back out there before you come on stage? Let alone yelling at him out there, the spots, you know, during those moments, the emotional time where either we pull a switch or take the referee, we'll get some heat on here. But he's so caught up in energy out there, like, you know how Jacob works, man. He's just in the moment. I've never seen anybody that freaking love being out there. Like, love. he, he could be one of those guys that went out all night, they went to the gym. Mm-hmm. As soon as it's time for that, you know, for his match, the bell ring, two things. He's in the back. Hopefully he ain't doing this no more smoking, right? Them new pores will kill you, right? Mm-hmm. But I would yell at him on that, and then he would pour water him and grab, like, you know, can I borrow some tape? <laughs> this is all while the music is playing. I said, Jake, boy, you got to get it together, son. Uh-huh. You just got to get it together. But I never worried about it once he got out there in the ring. Once I, he got out there in the ring, it was like, his home. He's just so talented that whatever he done out there, the people, he was just getting a pop left and right. You know, so yeah, you know, big shout outs to the Samoan Werewolf. You know, again, you know, do your thing out there. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy the journey. You're ready to travel the world. You know, save your strength, you know, uh, and, you know, put everything away, man. Because in this business, everything can be gone tomorrow. And if you ain't got a name to last 25, 30 years, you know, hey, well, there it is, you know. So each one, teach one. Good luck to you, Jake. Yes, sir, you man. Uh, so the uh, Paul Heyman's out now. So that means the yeah. wise man spot is open. Okay. Uh, I mean, hmm. they, they did throw three names in the pot. Of course, your name is number one at the very top. And, and why, why do you think that? You know why? I think that because yeah. you're an OG. The game and the knowledge you have up here yeah. is is quintessential. It's infinite. Like, you are uh, one of the, uh, the pioneers like in the, the Samoan family, uh, the lineage. You are, without a shadow of a doubt, and the, and, and, and the work you put in, like, you did the work. Yeah. I see you being a three-time Hall of Famer uh, when, when everything's said and done. Mm. I, I see you going in with the head shrinkers. WWE Universe, do you hear that? And I see you going in with Too Cool. <laughs> I see Too Cool going in to the Hall of Fame. So I see you being oh. a three-time Hall of Famer because, because you did the f-ing work. Mm. You, Like you said, no excuses. I, uh, I'm too hungover. I can't yeah. show up tonight. No, you like you were, you were there. And never in, in the years did you end up on any websites, any dirt sheets about not showing up, you know, not doing your job. Yeah. Like you did the work, man, around the world uh, every day. We figure it out. Yes, that's sir. why it's so important while we having these type of platforms. Yes, sir. And, and that's you know why your I mean? signature is worth money. And that's yeah. why when people meet you, man, that might be the highlight of their life. A lot of people like you, you really I've witnessed it. Like you make people's uh, it, it's a moment meeting you, it, it, you know, and. That that's the power of professional wrestling. Yes, sir. Yep. I'm just me. I'm yep. Solofa Fatu Jr. Yep. When you meet me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. But what you mm-hmm. see on the screen is Big Keys, Batman, whatever you want to call it, yep. Sotan. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's just I love like you know, yeah. You, you can feel people when they're having a bad day, mm. and I have the power to change that, and it's free. Yep. You know, and like I said again, for those that don't utilize that for you know, something positive. I mean, this world's already f***ed up as it is, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Spread love, hug each other. I, I'd rather, you know, live, love, and laugh. 
Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, just so much going on now. So, yeah, you know, I'm I'm thankful, Joey. I'm I'm blessed. I'm, I'm happy to do what we do every week. Come through from you know my busy schedule, and mm-hmm. we all link up together. And, you know, music is my passion, my love. Now, you know, it's another one of those bucket list for me. Yep. Like I wanted to conquer this, like to see if I could do it. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was nervous as hell when I got with Frank and Michael. Like, you know what I mean? Because uh, my first experience of being in the studio with certain producers, they kind of, I feel like, not their fault, maybe they didn't, maybe I was intimidating to them because of who I was, or who I am. Mm-hmm. And it, they just didn't give me pointers uh, to be able to help me be my best. And working with, you know, Frank and Michael, man, is just, you know, these cats here been doing it for a minute. You know what I mean? I, I post up on my Instagram, you know, uh, tag them as well. And they've been doing it for a minute, but most of all, we just mess together. You know, they make me feel comfortable. And, and it's good to have a producer, I feel, because it's my brand that's out there, is able to listen to my thoughts because mm-hmm. I'm not the professional but I, our conversation is that, is to have a conversation because this guy here, he tries to pinpoint everything exactly with my feelings and so forth. So, you know, yeah. So, you know, a lot of a lot of it is, uh, you know, making this music now. It, it's uh, another platform for me uh, to be able to speak my mind on certain things. You know, now I understand why Bob Marley, you know, we know what he, his music is about. You know, and I understand with Tupac, you know, what his music is about. And when you really, I listen to really close, close lyrics. And if there's a message in there that can I can take away from it, there it is. There's that platform you just learned off. But, you know, a lot of other stuff that, and I'm not knocking, it's just not my flavor. Right. You know, a lot of gibberish and all that stuff and... You know, club bangers, okay, I get it. Got to hear a good bass and some, you know, nice apple bottom chicks, you know, doing yeah. their thing. But, you know, I, I want to hear music like, you know, something to where I can understand what this brother or sister talking about. And I, I think, you know, we brought that to the, you know, forefront, you know, with this uh, Rikishi album. So stay tuned. We still got more to do, man. Man, and I can't wait, yeah. like everyone else, um, until that album yeah. finally drops. Because I know you got a lot of store uh, to back that album up. Um, so Bloodline 2.0, who besides the original Bloodline do you think they would uh, have their first feud with? Oh, well, I mean, yeah. I hope they don't give it away all at once. You know, obviously everybody's waiting for Roman to come back right. to tangle with Solo. You know what I mean? And then, you know, you got to have the, the twins somewhere uh, where... You know, they need to form up and and you got the, you know, the two Tongan kids, you know, they're, so where's Jacob? You know what I mean? And who comes in on the opposite side? You know, I'm sure Paul Heyman's going to be with the, the, other, exactly. the chief. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know, maybe maybe Lance on Hawaii comes in with Joe, you know, and now it's kind of even on the opposite end. And uh, but they're still missing, you know, uh, uh I guess they'd want to call it a wise man on Solo Sukkos, uh's part. So whether, you know, I've seen a few things of uh, uh, they were tagging with uh, uh, Eki's old manager. Alejandro. Yeah. Uh, Somebody Estrada. put a picture and all the, you know, with Jacob and him and, mm-hmm. you know, showing, the, you know, not knocking the guy. You know, it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, you know, that, but let's let's think about it. You know, does it fit? It might fit if Jacob goes off as single competition. But now you're remaking uh, something that's done already, like Omaga, right? Um, now, it has to be bloodline, has to be bloodline. There's no relationship as far as with Alejandro years in the family. Right. The only relationship was, you know, when Eki was there. But to make it, that's why the bloodline storyline, it's so real and people can relate because we're all connected. You know, the only real outsider is, you know, and he's not even an outsider. He's just, you know, Paul Heyman is just uh, 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 another ooze from back in the day, but put in, you know, been with us from the beginning. Mm-hmm. 
he watched the twins when they were five years old in the ring. Joe, and he was six, you know. Jacob was just a seed, you know, and he was just, I think, one years old, you know, when we used to do WCW in the Atlanta studio. And, and so, you know, to bring somebody in with Solo, I think if there's nobody else, I think Solo Sakura with the Tonkin brothers and Jacob, it's good enough there. Right, and then of course you got you know uh, Roman Reigns come back with the twins, maybe add Lance, uh, and then uh, you know with the wise man as their wise man. So I think now people ask, would I be interested? Yeah, I I, I guess you know it makes sense. Yes, <laughs> you know what I mean. Is the scheduling going to be? Because I don't want to hit the road. And that would probably be the only thing, reason why I would probably decline. You know, I just, there's so much to my life now, uh, Joey, than professional wrestling. Yeah. You know, my time is my time now. The second part of my life is, uh, you know, spend time to, you know, visit my kids, my grandkids. And it's just nice when I show up to, you know, the boys' homes. Like, I'm looking around like, and yeah, look at these, you know, they just remind me of your MTV raps. <laughs> you know what I mean? Walking on to these, and, and, and it just makes me proud. You know what I mean? Because we all got, you know, we all got different uh, tastes in life. And obviously I can see now, you know, I tell my boys, man, you know, treat yourself. Treat yourself. All this stuff, when, when you pass away, we can't take this with us. So enjoy it. And so that's the part I like. I like showing up. Mm -hmm. Visit the grandkids, you know, stay at the house and cook some Samoan food together. I spent a lot of quality time with my daughter-in-laws to really, really get to know my daughter-in-laws. You know what I mean? And, you know, the wrestling part, yeah, I've been there, done that. But I like just being home, you know, watching some movies with them, eating popcorn, you know, introducing the Samoan dish, you know, to my daughter-in-laws to show them how to make it. And it's just that quality time. Because I've lost a lot of time. You've gone so much. Yeah, I've lost a, a lot of time, and I'm not going to do that with my grandkids and yes, sir. you know my 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 boys, wife. I you know my family. You know, with all my 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 kids and so stuff, thirteen grandkids. Man, I got a lot of traveling to do. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of things uh, I need to do to continue to stay healthy. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm in the best you know feeling inside and out emotionally. You know, I'm I'm there, man. You know what I mean? I'm I'm peaceful. I'm I'm joyful. And uh, you know, what I'm what I'm left to do here on earth now is just continue to, you know, to spread knowledge and continue to support. Uh continue to build. And make dope beats. You know? And man, make dope beats, you know. I'm just because <laughs> that's never gonna leave me, you know, being a uh, that's who I am. I, I I dance. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? That's part of that's part of my damn yoga is just get up and play my music now and just start moving my body, you know? My wife used to say a body in motion stays in motion. That's right. Yeah, so I, I got to keep it in motion. <laughs> That's right. You know? Um, well, yeah. before we get into some uh, hip-hop news, I want to wrap it up with the bloodline. Uh, yeah. I saw some um, stuff out there. A, a fan was uh, interacting with uh, MVP, and no. the, the fan had said that the bloodline was a, a ripoff of the Hurt Business, uh, MVP's old faction, and MVP, uh, he he said, "Oh, you see it." So he ba he basically agreed. So my question is, do you uh, think that the bloodline has any kind of resemblance to the Hurt Business? Well, I think let me answer that question. You know, and, and this is straight up. You can point to facts, Google it, or whatever. We seventy five plus years, dog. Hurt Business came in, whatever. Right. Now, let's go back now. All right. We was already hurt business before they even gave us a gimmick, right? And now the bloodline, you talk about the bloodline ripping off. How, how could you rip off a family that's real? A family that's, I mean, we are the bloodline. We are the faction. And that fan that asked MVP that, okay, of course, MVP, you know, he's got to answer with, you know, whatever the case it may be. Mm -hmm. But, hey, hey, most shout out to MVP for sticking up for his. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day... I'm speaking facts. I'm speaking facts. I'm not speaking anything else, you know, bullshit or throwing anything out there. And I I, I love uh, MVP. He was a close friend of my, my brother, Eki. You know, but at the end of the day, 
is this. I'm always going to say this. Bloodline is the timeline. Yes, sir. You can flip it whatever way you want to flip it. Mm -hmm. at, the end of this, at the end of the day is asses and seats. And you talk about it. Her business, bloodline. Which one going to put asses and seats? Which one's going to, uh, I mean... Which Can one? Yeah. Which one? There it is. <laughs> which one is going to WrestleMania main event? Numerous occasions and set records and you know uh, drop history on it. Come on oh, now. Yeah, yeah. I could drop bombs on them every day, all day, every day, because at the end of the day, this mouthpiece that uh, represents the Samoan dynasty, you can't touch this man unless it's shit. All right, I shut the up. But other than that, hey, come on with it. I ain't hard to find. Yes, sir. So, wow. You know who wasn't hard to find this past weekend? It was Rick Ross in Canada. Oh, Lord. So, okay. man. Yes. So this beef <laughs> between Kendrick Lamar and Drake, I mean, it, it some weird shit happened before. There was, a sh there was like two shootings at Drake's house and some uh, uh, trespassers were tackled on the front lawn. What you know, is all this? Man, man. but, but yo, What is this beef about? Well, uh, well I, Kendrick Lamar, had, uh, we, we had tapped on this before. Kendrick yeah. Lamar put out a, a, a song called uh, Not Like Us. Okay. And man, that song, uh, it's a banger, okay, I'm not so gonna lie. But uh, it dissed Drake, called him a pedophile, yeah. like man, really below the belt type stuff, right? So we thought there was like peace and stuff, but no. Rick Ross goes to Canada, Drake's hometown turf, what what have you, and on stage he, he plays the Kendrick Lamar diss song in Canada. In Canada, Toronto. Well, there were some OVO uh, goons yeah. in in the audience that did not like that. Uh. So they waited. They created a human <laughs> wall when Rick Ross comes out. And yeah. and there was two dudes uh, right. mouthing to Rick Ross about this is our city, this is our city. Yeah. And all of a sudden, bam, he gets right popped. Rick, Rick Ross gets R popped. WrestleMania in Canada. <laughs> but it, yeah. it, it, the punch didn't look as good. But yeah. um, it, it was a did, did Rick Ross sell it? He did. He did. Sell he, it. he got. Where that. the hell was? It? Where the, I'm sure he had security. His entourage? I don't know. I saw one of them take a, a, take many, a, bump. Mo, a, a face bump. Yeah. Yes, he, he got kicked. He took multiple wow. Timberlands to the face. Uh, big dude, too, got Man. dropped. Rick Ross, I yeah. mean, he, he, you see him but, flaunting the money. He's got the mansions. Yeah. You think that he can get, get adequate security yeah. with, with this type of payroll, right? Yeah, well, I, I, hey, you know, I'm going to think as an entertainer, right? That, that's a good promo amongst both of them. I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I might call it, or <laughs> I'm thinking work. a month later, Drake will come out with a new album and Ross will come out with a new album. I think sales will go up high. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, they'll probably call each other. Hey, that was a good one. <laughs> I'm hoping it's out of work. You know what I mean? But, you know, I, I just seen uh, a, a lot of guys on World Stars. Shout out to World Star. You know, uh, they were on there. Some OG was just talking about people just stirring the pot. You know what I mean? It was just, tough. man, yeah. this, this, I don't even, I guess they try to put uh, the rapper's name into it. What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. And so he just, you know, he's speaking from a true OG. You can tell. Because he was just calm, cool, and just collected like he was got through eating a burger, just sitting in the car, <laughs> truck. Then y'all go in and go sit down someplace. Right. Stop putting my name in all that drama, you know. Yeah. Blah blah blah. But yeah, man, I I, I think hopefully I, I'm hopefully it's a work. You know what I mean? It, it ain't. I, I don't want to hear no more. You know, hip hop artists getting shot. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, just you know, accidents happen and things can happen, man. These kids nowadays, man, they just pull out that jammy and it's over with, you know? So y'all just, hey, y'all kind of just, you know, chill for a minute, man. Well, folks were saying chill for um, a minute. Rick Ross is a little relaxed with the security because he was in Canada. What he should have done was kept his head on a swivel and, and, and not dropped his guard because, Yo. I mean, you know, he's rich. I mean, he, well, nobody yeah, should be able but, to get uh, that close to him. Uh, rich, rich ain't gonna save your life. No, but you think you, real, you can you know, afford money, some money? Ain't gonna bring you back to life once no. you get you know jammed up and right, right. If they, I mean, what? <laughs> yeah, y'all stop watching Star Scarface movies out there. You know what <laughs> I mean? I just make some music and be happy to make music. You know what I mean? You 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 put you putting an impact on people's lives when yes. you're hearing your music. Yeah. Just you know. Continue just to have passion for your for your craft and just, you know, do the best you can, man. We ain't got time for this rapper or this song, uh, this music artist guy to 
or a girl to, you know, be knocking each other and stuff like that. You know, that's that's the poison what needs to be out on the music industry. Right. For the little time that I've been in, hey, trust you, mm-hmm. I'm in here doing the recording studio, but I'm also on the sideline doing my, my work, educating myself with the music industry, how this works, and why does this person get gets played on the radio? Why this person does it? I, you know, I haven't heard a Samoan on mainstream uh, radio in forever. There's a lot of blacks. There's a lot of whites. There's a few Latinos, right? But there's few, few Samoan, Island Samoans, Islanders that are on, you know, um, uh, you know, the, the radio. Mm-hmm. And that just, you know, you know that like, it, it, it drove me to do my research and to try to, that's another door now that I'm eager to kick in because I need to let my people in too, man. We need to eat too. We need to, we need to show you we got talent too on the mic. Right. You know, there's everywhere from singing to rapping to, you know, Island Reagan, you name it, man. I mean, that's who we are as Island people, man. You, you, what do they people do when they go to Hawaii and all that? Go watch a damn luau show. Mm. What are we doing? Singing and we got our girls out there in grass skirts. Come on now. You can't lock us out from anything entertainment. That's just, it's a new wave. It's a new era. Y'all go ahead and do the right thing because not Big Keith's going to be kicking them doors down. You you can best believe that. When you do kick those doors down, who's the first female rapper feature you would like to collaborate with? I already told you, said that a while back, you know, Cardi B. Oh, Cardi B. Yeah. You know, I got to go after all my apple bottom chicks, you know? (laughs) You know, Stallion, you know, the Stallion Mag, chick, Yeah, that's you know right, I mean? that's right. Wow, Cardi you know, B and Cardi B, Keesh. Stallion. Okay, what what rapper uh, out there? Because, I, man, I, I, man, I remember the Wu-Tang track, the Dynasty track. Yeah. Uh, you and Method Man would be a banger. You and Jay Boog would be a banger. Any rapper out there right now, uh, who would you want to feature uh, a song? I wanted to keep close to the Bay Area, my man, Too Show. Oh, my God. Too Show. Wow. God, these are legends, man. I gotta I gotta give them their flowers, man. You know? Too short. Too short. Yes, sir. Yes, wow, sir. That, there's definitely gonna be an edited version and a clean version because yeah. too short, yeah. We By all know how he gets it's down. It's gotta be a club banger, man. Yes, sir. You yes, know sir. What I, mean? I need a freak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> That'd be another badass remix. Yeah, it is. Just saying, man. Uh-huh. Uh, it's uh, really good to catch up back with you again, Keisha. Uh, so good likewise, to see my you, man. Um, so, um, do you have anything further up coming that you want to um, talk about? You want to plug? Um, I know you're you're going to be hitting the road for your uncle's service. Yeah. But do you have any other uh, signings? Anything um, coming up? You wanna... I actually get back, and uh, when I come back next week, uh, well, I'm actually. As you guys are hearing it, I'm here in Pensacola now. So, mm. but uh, when I do get back uh, next weekend, I'll be up in uh, uh, Seattle, Washington, for um, uh, a Comic Con up there in uh, uh, Urban, Washington. So it just go on my website. I, I mean, uh, I'll put it up there. It's on there, rikishifatu.com. And I'm always posting on my Instagram, you know, the verified page, my man, mm-hmm. the verified Rikishi verified, blue check. Page, the blue check. And yeah, that. So, uh, yeah, you keep up, you know, things comes in spurts for me, you know, but most of the time I try not to think about where am I going next. Yes, sir. You know, I try to just, I want to be in get the home. moment. In the moment, man, because yes, tomorrow sir. ain't promised to another one of us. You know what I mean? We can yes, plan sir. all day long, but at the end of the day, if you wake up in the morning, that's my new thing and always now. If you wake up in the morning, Keish, you're already winning. That's right. All right. But that's what I, that's what I want to leave everybody with, Joey. Yes, sir. Uh, remember this. It's uh, free to be kind to one another. And always, always smarten up. And we out.